Hi everyone, are you ready? Please take your seats, we're gonna begin. So for those who don't know me yet, my name is Noemi Ferreira. I'm currently working on Amazon. Big disclaimer, this slide is just because of the disclaimer. I don't like talking about myself, so I am not representing Amazon, not talking about anything that I have to do with my job right now, previous or current or future in Amazon. I've been, however, a developer and testing professional since 2009. There's a reason I'm phrasing this this way, first, um, professionally, because I learned, I self-taught myself uh, programming when I was very little, then I went to university and all of that. And then I say 2009, I'm not putting the number of years because I feel old. <laughs> and I've been in companies such as IBM, Microsoft, Dell, and NetEase. I've done over 20 presentations worldwide by now, and I'm the author of the book, How to Test a Time Machine, which should be publishing anytime soon. So within today to the next couple of days, probably, will be publishing. So I'm super excited about that. Um, if you want to contact me, there's a blog. Now it's a little bit frozen because I've been working on the book. Um, and there's also a Twitter handle that you can add me as well. Um, I don't know where I should put, point this thing. Um, first of all, before anything at all, I want to thank the people that are actually typing real time. I was told there were people doing that, bless their souls. Thank you so much because I have an accent, so it probably it's quite hard to, to get it. <laughs> um, so today we're going to talk about uh, crawlers, so also um, I talk about myself, let's talk about you guys. <laughs> And um, how many people here have deal with crawlers, build one, work with one? Okay, so that's good to know. Not many people, so I will take a little bit more time on the beginning, which is more for beginners, and then we'll go a little bit faster later, but hopefully everyone will be happy still. Um, so we will talk about what's a crawler, why we need one, and for what things, what type of crawlers they are, based on my experience, so I make up these uh, definitions. Um, What's the components of the crawlers, like uh, these ones. And we will see an example with Selenium, because we're in Selenium conference. And uh, we will see what can go wrong and what do you need to succeed when you work with crawlers. And this is gonna be, so we are doing this in person, so it's gonna be a little bit interactive, so I hope you guys are awake and ready. Because it's different when you're listening to a talk and you're like working on something, right? And you're like, okay, I want to finish things, but I also want to listen to this person. So be ready for me to ask you questions. So what's a crawler? So a crawler is an automatic system that iterates through an application, basically. And the objective is to find issues. We're in testing conference, right? Uh, it could be an application, a web application, but it can also be other type of presentations. And in this presentation, we will other type of applications. In this presentation, we will see a web app example, right? Because Selenium. Um, so, what sort of um, things so we would like to catch with a crawler? Why would we need a crawler? Anyone has any suggestions? Why can we use some application that will go through my application and grab issues? For accessibility, that could be one of the things. For sorry, exploratory testing. That's a really good one. Okay, so basically, discovery, exploratory testing. That's a good one. Um, we can find things that are common to applications. So, for example, 404s, which is a very common use for crawlers. Let's see if there's any broken link throughout our application, right? Once everything is set and done, the application is ready, let's go and look it. And we look for other common things, like for example, some issues with the CSS that could happen across our application. We are aware that sometimes an element has to have a particular uh, class and we want to look through all the elements of our, our application. We can use a crawler for that. Um, and the only thing is that it, really, it generally runs in production. So it's running very late for testing, right? So make sure when you use a crawler that you cannot cover that earlier, right? In an earlier stage. And these are the sort of uh, crawlers that I, again, this is made up, made up by me, different type of 
crawlers and applications, so let's go one by one. Um, UI uh, crawler versus API crawler. So UI will go and use a UI, like as a new application will do, and it will be like clicking around your application to go to the, uh, through it, right? Well, API is gonna use an API, <laughs> like the name <laughs> indicates, to navigate through the application. Um, is uh, faster to run if you're using an API in generally, and uh, the UI will be closer to the user behavior, so it's a little bit more close to what the user is gonna see. Um, the UI will check not only the links, but also other elements, and you can do that with API as well, to check other elements by checking the response of the whatever uh, API request you sent, um, but usually it's more um, generally used for checking like a broken link, like a 404. And then we have view first and arc first. If you have no, any knowledge of um, a graph and trees traversals, this is something that you would, like may ring a bell, like uh, maybe you heard it as uh, depth first and breadth first, right? But I want to focus on view and arcs because it's um, what we are going to be defining on a type of crawler. Uh, so view first, you first focus on your view and you check anything that you need to check in, it, in that view and then you move to the next view, right? You, make, you move to the next link. And with the arc first, you focus first on the navigation. So you go through all the possible links and then when you exhausted all the navigation points, you go and check the view. Um, the view first will work better when you have many checks and you don't have to do so many uh, navigation. And the arc first usually works better if you need to focus on the navigation, but you don't need to do so, so many tests per um, view, right? You just check, for example, a 404. You can also have exhaustive versus shortcutted. So what does this mean? So exhaustive means you're gonna cover the entire application. Your goal is to go through the entire, entire application. However, shortcut is like, okay, you have just a number of time or number of um, uh, views that you're gonna visit, and then at some point you're gonna be, okay, we're, we're done with this. Um, so the, um, the view first, the, sorry, the exhaustive is better for a smaller application. Um, and shortcut is better if, if your application is very big and you don't want to go through the whole thing. Um, the exhaustive may make too many calls, so you may run into the night of service, something like that, because of using it. Um, and the shortcut may skip important things, so you always have to keep a balance, right? And you can also, like, pick and choose, like, find the right balance where you shortcut it. And another type of um, crawler that I found and that I've seen is random versus smart. So random could also be partially random, uh, which means that you can have some kind of view first, deep first sort of approach, but then you do it randomly. And the smart, you use some smart logic to give priority to parts of application. So what does it mean? You know some parts of the applications are always gonna be a little bit more important than others, right? If you're looking for pricing, if you're looking for something that is sensitive data. Um, all of this is probably something that you want to test more exhaustively. Right, so you want to give priority to the sort of application, even if you're in a run, if, if you're in a um, shortcutted crawler. So you're gonna cut it, but then you want to really, really go and look into all the parts of uh, that are important for you. Um, the random one is likely needed to be shortcutted because you're going randomly. So there, at some point, it will be like, okay, how do you know that you were finished? Right, so you use some sort of we we done enough views. And for a smart, it may end up just after you visit those important parts. It may, you may use, again, you can mix, right? So what's the components of a crawler? I keep talking about views, right? So what a view? So um, the views, and, and usually for graph, they're called nodes, but I'm calling them views because we are like working, working towards an application. And it will look something like that. You can represent it through a graph. Your application can be represented through a graph and you can represent, it's gonna be a start view, you're gonna have a second view, you can have a third view, and you're gonna have something that connects it. What do I mean by view? For a web application, a view could be a URL. It could be an index.html. So how can you tell when you're in a view or another one? Anyone has suggestions? tips there. So for a web app, the URL can tell you with, with view you are. You're in index, 
during about us, during your cart. Different views, different URLs. But what happens when you have something like a game? How do you know you are in a different view in a game? You look at the narrative, yeah. You can look at, for example, if I'm expecting a door, a door to be open, right? Is the door open yet or not? If it's open, then I'm in a different view. There could be another way, which is you can look into what objects you have. Different views may have different objects, different enemies, different, depending on what type of game you have, right? So that could be for, for a game. Um, there's another important thing when you're traveling with uh, application, you're using um, links to travel across an application. Um, sometimes you may have a link that is not part of your application, right? You have, uh, to find more, go to seleniumconference.com, right? And that link is not part of your original application, what happens if you're crawling and you happen to go through it? You're testing someone else's application that you don't care for, right? So you have to be very careful that you're always testing your application. Um, and then games of harder apps, I already mentioned, right? Um, other key concept, arcs, links. Um, I wanted to make a Zelda reference, but I don't know if people will get it with the links and the arc, anyhow. Uh, so link is what goes from one uh, view to the next one. Right? In web application, literally will be a link, an href. For other type of application, it may be an object. Some other DOM object could be an action, right? So, how do you navigate through the links? You click, right? For your web application, just click on the link. That's as easy as it gets. You can make an API call, as we said before, right, and verify that the thing is supposed to go where it's, it's supposed to go. What about sweeping and other actions? Like now we have a lot of applications that are mobile and then allow you to swipe across. Maybe swiping is the thing that causes the application to move from one view to the next. So we have to be very careful about that as well. A lot of crawlers just go around clicking. It's not the only thing that you can do in an application. What about VR apps? So VR app, you may be moving your head, but when you interact with something, you either have your handset and you interact with your handset, or you have to look into an object for a while. And once you're looking and staring into an object for maybe five seconds, that, will, that object becomes interactable and something happens. So that's another action that people really don't take into account when talking about crawlers. What objects are clickable? So for a website, href is usually, it gives you what is going to be clickable. Even if you have a button, sometimes it's, that button is related to an href. So href is, is what you're looking for. Um, you may want to go across and click all the DOM objects, right? Just in case there's some objects that doesn't have the href that does another action. What's the problem with this? What about containers? So you may have a div that is containing some other action, right? Which is the object that is doing the action, the div or the bottom below? So you have to be very careful with that as well. Where are you clicking and to skip things that you don't need to click so, because otherwise those will be considered as different links, but they're doing the same and you're testing the same and you're wasting time, which we don't want to. And what about moving and changing objects? So we talked about games before. And sometimes when you deal with games, sometimes the same object could be two different objects for the same link, right? So these two um, aliens will represent the same link. If you click them, you will get the same action and you go to the same view, right? So that's why it's important to be careful with them as well. So don't over test, don't test twice the same things. And we also have dynamism, and we also have hidden elements. So if your href is supposed to be hidden, you shouldn't really test it, right? Because the user is not gonna see it. You may want to, but you're wasting time again, right? And for dynamic objects, probably just talk to the developer that created it, because it really depends on of each application, so I cannot give you a generic um, tip for this right now. 
um, visited storage. We talk about not revisiting the same uh, views again, right? You go to your homepage, you test everything in your homepage, then you go to the about us, you test everything in the about us. But it's very important that you don't go again to the index, right? Because then you're testing again and again the same thing. So you have to be very careful about that as well. Um, so usually the visited storage is some sort of data structure. Generally it's a dictionary potentially could be like a maybe a, a list in which you'll be storing everything that you visit already. Just as the name stands, right? It can't get easier than that. Um, heat map. So a lot of people don't take into account heat maps when they're dealing with uh, crawlers. And what's a heat map? As the name indicates, <laughs> it's a map that shows different heat. So it's like when you're wearing just those googles that see in the night. Um, it basically will be warmer the more important our uh, view will be. So we can tell which views are going to be more important for us. Um, so can someone suggest what part of uh, an application may be more important? How can we tell that a, a view is more important than another one? How many links there are to it? Links, that's an interesting one. Anyone else? The amount of views on the page, that's like links as well. So for example, the usage. How many clicks does that one have, right? You may have a lot of links, but how many views is, is getting? How many people are loading that URL? By issues found. How many issues you have found on that view? And that could make a big, big difference between a view that uh, is more important and less important because it's telling you that you need to test that more. By novelty, how new this uh, view is, maybe that could be one thing for the head map, heat map. And others, right? We can come up with others, like uh, she said, links, right? Number of links. Very interesting will be to have a heat map that is auto-generated in a smart way using these variables, right? That will be super interesting. Most of the times we use our experience for this and we're like, yeah, I'm sure that this view is more important than this other one, so I'm gonna give it more uh, weight, basically. Let's see a, a very basic example with Selenium. I don't want to deal too much into the code. Um, I'm just gonna tell you what the code is supposed to be doing we start the crawler. We explore the first view. And then in the first view, we're gonna see each of the levels. So each of the um, different views that we're getting linked to it. And we will initialize the link views. So you see there, there's a view count minus one and then view count zero and then the get all rest without this view count. Let's see that one in uh, detail. So for checking a status, that's showing very weirdly, um, but basically for checking a status, we check if, if the, we call an API with a request, and then we check if the status is a valid status or not. Um, and then to get the href, we find anything that has to do with the A element, and then we added the view cones. As I said before, we added inside here. Anyone can tell me anything wrong about this code? Seems fine? No one? It's very tricky, this question. There's two things wrong. First, find elements by type. Find elements. No, that's fine. Yeah. It's a, a little bit. It doesn't look really well, but it's it's okay. Um, there was someone here first. Yeah, that that's one thing. Okay, correct. Okay. Um, anyone else? Okay, let me tell you one thing. When you're dealing with Python, 
this thing here, get attribute. No one? This is done for backward compatibility. Now you should use get DOM attribute. What this is doing is getting me the partial href. He's getting me the, prop the property, not the attribute. You have to be very careful about the difference between attribute and property. This is getting me a property, this is getting me a partial href, right? And that is why then I use the get DOM attribute below, right? Because then if I need to navigate and I need to use the API to navigate into that, I cannot because it's partial. And then I have to do something to make it unpartial, right? Like get my uh, um, domain or something and add it there. So that's important. I mentioned before another thing, hidden href. I'm not checking this to be hidden or anything. What if it's hidden? I'm doing tests that I shouldn't be doing. Um, so yeah, you have to be very careful with crawlers. It really depends on your application. There's a lot of things that you have to consider. It looks easy. You go into it and then you find all these issues. Um, in this, we get all the reference uh, from the node and find it by tag, and then we add it to action. And again, sorry, uh, we're adding it to an action thing, and this is going to be important. Um, this one is not so important. We initialize the view, we get all the URLs, and we click the next action, and then we explore the next. So we repeat the process, basically. Um, this one, this one is important. Why? Because we're doing the click, right? And in this case, I'm using XPath to look for the href. Probably not the best way, but it's a way. Now I'm doing click here. Anyone has any other suggestions? So we talk about clicking is not the only way you can do an action in an application. So in here, we should probably consider things like swiping, things like multiple tapping, and try to see if that will make anything with the element or with the application itself. So um, we could add other actions here. So what could go wrong? I think this is the most important slide. We already covered uh, how to identify views, right? The views are not always easily identifi identifiable. Uh, we could have external links. We need to keep track of visited, and we need to have a top level. Why? Because otherwise we go and cover all the application uh, fully. It may be the case that we want to do it, but most times we don't really go to want to go so, so deep, right? And that's why we have a top level. But we already covered this. Um, how to identify navigation points and arc. We already covered some of this, right? We talk about the aliens. And we talk about the partial versus full hrefs. So careful with those. What else? Forms. Or friends forms. When you go and you're testing an application and suddenly you get that, a login, or any other form, what do you do? Suggestions. Sorry? You can bypass it with an API call, for example or you can like literally just have automated how to deal with your form and you have, if you find this sort of elements, you do these actions, right? Pop-ups. You're doing uh, your application and suddenly this page says hello. So how do you deal with this? This is a different window. You need to close the window, right? So you either can click OK, but then again, your driver is not pointing to this. Your driver is pointing to your other application. So you need to figure out a way of closing that window, right? This is another thing that can go wrong and usually goes wrong. Other things, cookies. So I don't know here in the States, uh, you don't have this thing that you have to accept all the cookies, but in Europe it's very common that you get that message of, OK, these are your cookies, please accept them, um, and then you kind of have to go around that as well, right? And there's several ways of doing that. Uh, you can send the cookies automatically with an API call. Um, you can again close it. You can like use navigation for that. Not the best way, but you can do it. Um, you can also have dynamic objects. And uh, for that, again, you need to talk to 
the developers that create it and see what that dynamism is about because it's, it really depends application by application. And what about the state links? So we talk about the navigation, right? And we talk about the different ways you can navigate. And why, one way that you can navigate is that you click on the view, you grab all your links, and then you click on the next one. By the time you go back to that view to visit those links, those have gone stale. So you're gonna have to get them again, right? And sometimes that is uh, the case. Sometimes you need to get them again, sometimes you're lucky. So it really depends as well on how you got these links. If you save them as a full URL, if you save, save them as an object that you have to click and then you're gonna have to get the object again. Um, so this is something that you also have to take into account when you're planning for crawling. So what do you need to succeed? So one of the things that you mainly, uh, mainly need to succeed for this, if you know graph trees and traversals, I know some people don't really want to learn about this, but unfortunately if you're dealing with crawlers, this will save you your life because it can help you understand how to navigate through the application better. And also it will help you with the tracking visited nodes as well. App knowledge. You have to know your app in order to create the proper crawler for it. You have to know what you're looking for. You have to know where the things are more important than others so you can get your hate map either from a tool or from your experience. And, and you have to know what type of, user, of issues you're looking for, right? Are they API? Are they UI? When do they happen? Do they happen in the specific points of application? So you need to know all of this in order to create the proper crawler because otherwise, yeah, we have a crawler that goes through the app and does nothing, really. Right? It's not really telling me anything about the app, right? And you have to, I'm saying it with a triple uh, exclamation point. You have to really, really make sure that you cannot cover this before the crawler runs. Because by the time the crawlers run, the user is already seeing this application and he's already seeing these issues, right? It may be good, for example, if your application does not expect the user to tell you about these issues and then you want to make sure that if something happens, you can backtrack rap rapidly and fix it, right? But most of the times the user has seen it, so you don't want it to go so late <laughs> as to get the crawler for, the, for you to understand this, right? It has to be um, early if possible, right? So let's go through the summary together. What's a crawler? Anyone? I told you this was going to be an interactive, uh, come on. What's a crawler? Okay, it's a way of automatically exploring your application. Why and when do we need the one? Maybe a couple of things or? The, Correct. Exploratory testing, we talk about that as well. So discovery, common issues, quick coverage. Type of crawlers, anyone remember any type of crawler? UI API. UI API. Um, what about the components of a crawler? Views and links or arcs. <coughs> we cover the examples. Anyone can tell me one or two things that can go wrong with the crawler? Pop up, good. Stay links, very nice. And what do you need to succeed? Come to Selenium Conference. That's a good one, yeah, sure. So I think I've gone super fast. And thank you so much. So now we open for questions. Hey, uh, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, my question is, um, we usually write our uh, functional test for the each page or each functionality of the, mm -hmm. um, the our website, which covers almost, uh, um, most of the functionality, like P0, P1, P2, test Correct. cases, everything. So how does this crawler uh, gives advantage compared to our regular functionality test? Okay, what are you missing currently from your regular functionality test. Sorry, I didn't get you. 
so what are you missing right now from your current functionality test? You're going to answer your own question. No, I'm Is there something that happened in production? Uh, at least our website is <laughs> good. Um, I, I don't... Then you don't need a crawler, you know? <laughs> <laughs> if it's good, it's good. You don't, you don't have to use things just because someone is here presenting them, right? Mm -hmm. You use them because it's useful for you. It may not be useful now, maybe in the future it is, right? Maybe your application has already covered everything, great. But maybe you figure out later on your application grows Mm -hmm. And it turns out that you get a lot of issues that are not covered by, for example, some CSS class, as I mentioned. And you need to do a quick coverage mm -hmm. through across all your test cases. Imagine if you need to add a CSS check across all of your test cases. How long will that take you? Across all the, depending on the application, the functionality. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the thing. So if you need to add something across all your tests, that will take you a long time. Mm -hmm probably quicker to be the crawler. You always have to balance out, right? And figure out what's the best for you and for your applica application. Um, crawlers are very interesting for games, for example, because games are so hard to test and it requires so much manual testing. So that could be very interesting for them. To verify things like broken links is also very interesting as well. Because mm -hmm. usually in your test, by the time you're writing your functional test, you cannot val validate a link that is going to happen in production that link is going to happen later on. Your okay. production environment is not set up yet. OK, got it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I can understand that it is useful, even as for the web applications. But for APSS, how can it be useful? Because you are getting the status code anyways. Mm -hmm. So what it is giving is like if the resource is not there or a broken link, yeah. what advantage it is giving for an API test? So if you're running APIs, it's going to be much faster than if you're running clicks, right? So to begin with, API is going to be faster. And the second thing is that you can also get the request response. So you're getting literally the HTML that comes with the request. So on that HTML, HTML you can also check things. And again, it's going to run faster. The UI is just more close to what the user is doing. So that's why UI is also important. And you can see, uh, like an example I show you, is a mixture of them both. So that's like more uh, usual thing to find. Yeah. Uh, with the crawler, could I see if I could find some IP and log or you know, it's difficult to reach from various areas. So is there like an easy solution or no? That's like the dark arts. Can you repeat? Because you were yeah. very far away and I couldn't hear it. I'm saying that with the crawlers, the problem that I've seen in my own personal usage is mm -hmm. that the IPs could get blocked or, you know, the site might stop or, you know, so it's not easily accessible. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to get around it or no, that's part of the game? That's part of the game. But um, when you're running your own application, so this is sort of the things that you have to talk to the developers, right? If they can open a way for you to test it, that then can be easily closed and that other people cannot use it. So you're going to have to figure your security strategy around that. And it's not like a general thing that I can tell you right now, right? You have to see your application, how we can do it, and your particular case of your particular objects, right? Um, but it's a good thing, right? It means that other people cannot, like, mal use it, right? So it's a good thing. Thank you. Is coming. <laughs> Hi. We have a similar application which does wherein, uh, say, a crawler, um, when I'm running it, before the dev pushes his code, okay, run my cl uh, crawler, get me a list of all the number of elements, number of buttons, okay, I have particular X number of buttons, X, Y number of elements and all. So after the push, okay, I have this count and then I verify it. but. Um, in case if you want to do a functional validation, say I have node 1, node 2, node 3, and say node 1 and node, node 2 gives me a flow, and then if I have to verify those, is there a possibility? So like I need to put a break at node 2 and check that gives me a functional validation, so. Um, yeah, so basically you're saying, can I run my all my functional validation as part of the crawler? Yes, yeah, so. That's a good idea. Yes. I never try, but it's. Like, why not, right? You get your application, your functional validation will have, for example, you can have a table somehow, right? That um, it tells you 
the view and it tells you your test, which test to call. And then when you reach that view, you call those tests. Totally doable, yeah? And it's super interesting. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? This is a in-person talk, so you can use it, okay. So yeah, so if you enjoyed it and if you think that's going to be useful for you, there will be more on the book. I'm not selling you the book, but it's just, I, I literally brought this for you. I didn't write it for me. I'm not gonna get any money out of it, very little. Um, so yeah, it's, it's up there or we will be up there in a couple of days, tops. Thank you so much. <laughs>